Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setre. I hope you're all doing well. So today I've got a different topic. So I'm going to be talking about how to apply for UK standard visitor visa. And in the video, I'm going to be talking about what you can and what you cannot do when you apply for standard visitors visa what the eligibility criteria is, I'll talk about the documents required, the cost and why you can be refused. So if you want to know more about how to apply for UK Standard Visitors Visa, you need to watch this video to the end. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setre. As I said in the introduction, I am going to be talking about how to apply for UK Standard Visitors Visa, all the information you need. There are two options. You can do things yourself without invitation from somebody or you can have someone invite you to come to the UK. But before we go there, once again, I'm Becky Setre. I'm a nurse. I work in the UK. I've been living here for several years. So I've got a lot of tips I give out to international nurses who have come to the UK from wherever. I give tips and advice. And also for people who want information about professional development and all that, I try to give information and I guide you and I give you the information I can. What I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know or I'll send you links to help you. So. If you like what you hear on this channel, please remember to subscribe, like and share. So now I've got my list, so I'm just going to be going through. So in order to be successful in your standard visitor visa application to the UK, you have to demonstrate to the authorities that you are a genuine visitor. So you're coming to visit UK genuinely, and also you have to demonstrate that at the end of your visit, you're going to go home. If you are not able to demonstrate these things or convince them about these things, then I'm afraid um, you would not be able to get your visa or you'll be refused. I'm going to be talking at the end about how or why you can be refused as well. So now, so the standard UK visitor visa, allows you to stay in the UK for up to six months, nothing more than that. And I'm going to go through what you can and what you cannot do when you come on such a visa. So if you come on a standard UK visitor visa to the UK, you're coming either for tourism, so you want to tour the UK, you're coming to do a voluntary work or a volunteering work for up to 30 days, for a registered charity. You can get that visa for transit as well or attending a meeting. So either to volunteer for up to 30 days with a registered charity, transit, attending a meeting or interview. For school exchange programs, people can do that or attending a recreational course for up to 30 days. You can also do placement or take come here on a visitor visa to take an exams. As an academic senior doctor or dentist or for medical reasons as well. So people can get standard UK visitor visa for medical treatment. But with that, you need a lot of money to show you can pay for your treatment and all that. And doctors, it could be they're coming for a meeting or dentist for an academic sort of things as well. Now let's talk about what you cannot do. So the first thing you cannot do as a visitor in the UK, if you're coming on a standard visitor's visa to the UK, you cannot do a paid work or for a company or for a self-employed person. You cannot claim public funds. You cannot marry or register a civil partnership or give notice of marriage or civil partnership. If you need that, then you need to apply for a marriage visa for that. 
what are the eligibility criteria so to be able to get this visa you need to be able to show that you will leave at the end of your visit you also need to show that you will be able to support yourself and if you're coming with dependent you can support them as well during your visit you need to demonstrate that you're able to pay for your return trip that is for the ticket and your stay as well um, you will also need to um, you have to also show that you will not leave in a UK for extended periods throughout frequent or successive visits or make UK your home. All they want to know is you go back home and you're not going to pretend and make UK your home. Now, what are the documents that are required? First of all, you need to do your online application. You need a valid passport. Make sure the passport is not due to expire. You need a blank space in a passport where they would put your visa. If you're applying for this visa, give yourself a long time because it can take a while. Um, so you need to make sure you give yourself up to three months before your travel. You don't start applying. Maybe two weeks before you're traveling, you start applying. So give yourself enough time. You may also need to uh, submit things like previous travel documents like an old passport they might require that so you may need to submit that you may need no you may you will need proof of accommodation um, that is where you will be staying when you come to the uk so you can either book a hotel some of them you don't need to pay any deposit you can just reserve make reservations so you can show those details if you're going to be living with a host then I'm going to be talking about some of the things that your host would need to do. Now, you need to also show detailed itinerary of what you're going to do. So when you come and you say you are a tourist to the UK, where are you going to be touring? What are you going to be doing? So you can, you know, print things on the internet. I'll try and add some, um, information about tourism in the uk so you can have a look whether you want to do all sorts of things in london there are a lot of tourist places in london you can you know show if you can show your itinerary you have to declare any criminal or civil offense if you have any you may also need to show a tb test if you're from certain countries on the list for that you would need to provide your biometric information also if you're going to be staying for more than six months now if someone is inviting you so as I said you can do these things yourself or someone would be inviting you if you're doing it yourself it means that you've got all the money to show you've got the hotel booking or reservation and all that but if you're going to be living with someone and someone is sending you an invitation then that person needs to send you an invitation letter they would also need to give, um, so they'll give you the letter of invitation. They can email that to you. They also need to send a copy of their pay slips up to six months. They would also need to send a copy of their biometric information in their passport or the residence permit that they have. They need to send you a copy of that in email. They have to just scan it and send to you. So copy of their passport showing where their picture is and all their details as well. Now, they also need to show evidence of tenancy because if I say I'm going to be hosting you, I need to show I live in a house, I have a place to live myself. So if they are tenant, they need to send you the copy of their tenancy agreement. If you have a mortgage, then you have to send them some mortgage um, statement, I would say, to show that they are paying for their house or any other thing regarding to their accommodation where they live. Now, they also need to show or send you uh, about six months worth of their pay slips if I haven't sent that, said that already and copy of their bank statement. It could be either way. Additional information may be required according to your individual requirement or employment status as well. So if you are employed, back home where you are applying from they would need a letter from your employers 
to say that or to confirm your position at work, your salary and the length you have been working there. If you're self-employed, then you need to show evidence of your business registration document. You need to show also the name of your business, the registration date. You need to also show proof of funds and you need to show bank statement and proof of your earning as well. If you're doing things yourself without someone inviting you, you have to show all these things yourself. You have to show money and you have to also show some ties to your country. If for say you, your brothers, your sisters, all your family are living here, you're back home, you haven't got a job and they're inviting you, then they will start thinking, oh, this person goes and they are not going to go back home. And if you're not careful, you, you will be um, rejected or you will not get your visa anyway. Now, if you're a student, you will need a letter from your educational institution confirming your enrollment to that educational institution and also saying about your leave of absence. So if you're coming for a graduation, you're coming for tourism, you can't be coming to UK for tourism during the middle of the term. So it would be like a holiday. So the school would be confirming that, oh, we're on holiday and this person wants to travel, things like that. If the person is under 18 years old, they need, they need further uh, documents. For example, birth certificate, if they adopted adoption certificate will be required as well. If they are traveling unaccompanied, still they need adoption papers or birth certificate. Um, and they also need a signed letter from both parents confirming details of anyone who is traveling with that child under 18 because we take child safety and child protection very seriously in the UK. They will also need a copy of the parent or legal guardian's biographical, uh, the page from their passport as well, just to confirm all these. Documents that you will present when you arrive at the port of entry. So let's say you've arrived from Ghana or wherever to the UK. What do you need to present? You will need to present your passport to the immigration people and there is a landing card. So when you're on the plane and you're about to land a couple of, let's say about an hour or so before you land, they pass around the landing card and you will write information, where address you're going to be living at and all those things. They want those information and they would ask you some of this information when you get to the immigration officers as well. So you need those things and they need to make sure that there is a visa in your passport as well. Why would they refuse you a visa? So I'm going to be talking about the reasons for refusals. Um, so one of the reasons would be missing one of the documents which is required um, or applying for the wrong visa, fraudulent document, overstayed. So if you've overstayed before, it is likely they will reject you or they refuse you. If you have a criminal history, it's likely you will be refused. If you haven't got enough funds for your you know, your visit, you will be returned or refused the visa. Um, and how much does this cost? And also, if you're not able to prove to them that, you know what, I'm coming just on a visit and I'm going back home, I have something to go back to, I have a house, I have a business, I have a job, I'm well paid, I'm not coming to stay here. So far as you can convince them on paper in your application to show that there is something that ties you back to your country of origin, you would be fine. How much does the visa cost? So if you're applying for um, a standard six month visa that costs about hundred pounds. If you're applying for a two year visitor visa, it would cost you 376 but bear in mind if you have a two year visa which is a long long ones you can't stay here for the two years you can only say up to six months you have to go back and come back 
you don't stay for all. You can also apply for a five years visa, visitor visa, which is £670. And as, as well as that, you can only stay for six months, then you have to go back. You can also apply for a 10 year visa, visitor visa to the UK and that cost about £837 and with that as well you are not allowed to stay in the UK for 10 years you can only stay for six months and then you go so for each visit you only stay for six months and then you go back so basically actually this video one of my subscribers actually emailed me and asked if I can do a, a video about how to apply for a standard UK visa visa so this is a uh, credit to him for asking that I hope whoever you are, I can't remember your name, but I hope you you like this and it's helpful and to anyone else who is watching. I remember when I was home, people go around looking for middlemen to apply for them. They pay people to help them get a visa to visit UK. You do not need all that. Some people ask friends, can you invite me? You know, sometimes if you're asking for invite, some people don't like to share their personal details with different people. If your family is different, but I'm sh sharing with you my very personal information, my date of birth, everything about me in my passport, in addition to how much I'm paid and all that. And if you have money, you have good job and things like that, you can do these things yourself. All you need to know is I would add the link to the video, the description, so you can look at it yourself. All you need is to prove that you have enough money to support your travel with your family or your own. You can pay for accommodation wherever you're going to be living. So far as you can prove that, show that you have a business back home, show that you're a boss or you've got this job back home and you're going back, you enjoy your home better than coming to stay and be struggling and all that. Anyway, so I hope this video has been helpful. Um, share, like and subscribe to my channel as well. Thank you very much for watching and take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.